Hey everybody, it's been a while since I've uploaded one of these videos and this one's going to be kind of short. I'm actually involved in a pretty significant project right now and I will give you all more details on that uh, pretty soon. But for now, I wanted to share a tip that has been really valuable for me when it comes to Instagram. We all know about the Instagram crop. If you shoot portrait, uh, you might lose part of your composition at the top or the bottom. And so there's a couple of ways to fix that, but I've found one that works really well for myself and I don't end up with the bars on the side. So let me show you how you can quickly fix that so that your entire composition is visible to the viewers uh, on your Instagram feed and you don't lose any quality and it works in both regular and dark mode. And that's the kicker. That's where some other people's ways of dealing with that Instagram crop might not work out as well as they want it to because some of their viewers are using dark mode on their phones or regular mode. And so if you add those bars on the side to change the uh, aspect ratio of your image to fit the entire composition and not have that Instagram crop happen, um, it can look a little weird if the viewer is using dark mode and quite a few might be. So let's take a look at that now. So if you look here, this is what we're trying to avoid. Notice this is my normal full image. And in portrait, it's gonna crop either the leaves at the bottom or that bridge at the top. And there's nothing I can do about it. Instagram won't let me widen it all the way out or zoom all the way out so that it fills the frame. And so it's gonna look a little strange if I post it cropped. So we've got a little leeway because we're posting to Instagram, so we don't have to have perfect quality. So you can go ahead and export out your finished file from Lightroom and then open it up in Photoshop. And once you've got it open there, you'll see it opens as kind of a background layer. You'll want to unlock that and then you're going to add another layer below. And so you can just click that button there at the bottom and rearrange them. You want that new layer to be at the bottom. And so then what you're going to do is you're going to go to your canvas size and you're going to expand it from the left. And this is where you kind of have to make a judgment call here. You're going to go percentage wise and you'll go between 12 and 16%. And so you want to do as low a number as possible to, to get your entire composition in the shot. So there is a little trial and error here, but you'll get a feeling for it. Once you've done that, you'll then go to the top layer and you'll go to transform and distort. And you can see here how I can then drag out that image to fill the new size. And that's basically it. It's really, really simple, but it is now wide enough that it won't be cropped at the top or the bottom when I post it to Instagram. And so now I'll just save it as a JPEG file and uh, nothing fancy here, call it whatever, um, your JPEG quality, anything like in the 90s to 100 is fine. You're not really losing much here. I know you're re you might be resaving a JPEG, but on Instagram, you can completely get away with it. So don't worry too much about that at all. But this is the simple fix that allows you to not have to deal with those bars and the dark mode. So before I show you how to post this to Instagram and the difference that it makes, let me just stop and say there are a few instances where this won't work. When you distort an image and you make it a little wider, then anything that is a circle, like a moon or a sun, or maybe even somebody's face, it's gonna make it wide and it might look a little unnatural. For landscape photography though, you can absolutely get away with it. The viewer will have no idea that it has been made a bit wider and it will be, in my opinion, much more preferable to widen your image a little bit to fill Instagram and keep your entire original composition than to either add those bars on the side, which can look really strange sometimes, or just allow Instagram to crop your shot and take out part of what you wanted when you were out in the field. So I have seen no real discernible loss in quality by using this transform distort feature on any of the images I've ever posted to Instagram. 
And it is one of my little tricks up my sleeve to get my feed and keep my feed looking really consistent. So now here we are with the resized photo. And as you can see, it will completely fit in a post. There's just a tiny bit of movement allowed, which means I could have made it slightly wider if I wanted to, but this includes the leaves at the bottom and the bridge at the top, and that's what I really cared about. And so my last step, I always go in and edit it and add just a touch of sharpness. It seems like they really pop a little better on the screen when you sharpen in Instagram. And there we go, that's it. You now have an image that will fill the frame. Your original composition is preserved and if you had something important at the top and bottom of your image, you don't have to worry about it being cropped out. So it's a pretty easy solution, a few steps in Photoshop, but it really doesn't take long once you're used to it. And to me, it's well worth it because sometimes you compose things and you hate what Instagram does to them in portrait mode. Again, as a reminder, if you're taking portraits, if you're shooting things with perfect circles in them, they're gonna look a little strange if you use this because it does distort them a bit wider, but for most content, especially in landscape photography, it's really not gonna make a difference. You'll know, but your viewers won't know. And your feed will look good, your comp original composition will look great, and I've used it for several years now, and I've been really happy with it. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you want more tips, tricks, and field-based videos, subscribe to the channel. That's all you have to do to thank us. Also, give it a thumbs up too. And uh, anyway, we're really excited. We've got a couple of announcements coming real soon, and I'm very excited about what's coming this year and next year. It's going to open an entirely new chapter in my journey in photography, and I can't wait to share it with you all. Thanks a lot.